Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of this series. We are going to go ahead and open our mod, cleverly named Learning Things and make it active. We want to modify it. I've added information about the mod. It's not going to change anything in game, but it's nice to have the information. When people look at their mod list and they go, what, what was that? What was it? Now they know. Interestingly, the construction set is smart enough to tick for you the Master Fires, Morrowind, Blood Moon and Tribunal in case you forget because it knows it needs them. Only works with those three Master Fires. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Soon enough we're going to have our warning. Remember those are the harmless warnings. Sure I can go yes, 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 but we did modify the Morrowind any, so now all I can all I need to do is hit cancel and it's not going to ask me again if I want to continue despite the warnings. It's a lot faster granted however if there are other warnings other than those dialogue warnings that are harmless you're not going to know about it which is not great so you want to go to your Morrowind folder that's the one again with the you know the game launcher and down there you have a warning text if you open it you'll see these are all the harmless warnings that we just skipped you go all the way down there was a duplicate that was removed okay good all right this warning file is going to be generated every time you open the Morrowind and uh, the construction set. So do have a look, especially when you're testing your mod. It might look like it's working and there's no problem, but if you have the yes to all, there has been warnings and the game, you know, still worked. But you could have a missing texture, you could have all kinds of things. So do look at the warning text. For now, we have... A new room I created a room called secret storage we know how to do that and I added a Nord house in there this is actually the exact same house that our good friend uh, Nosius Rodin is Nosius there he is has select an object see to see it from the side it's see for side okay it's uh, it's that sort of English now this house is one of the houses you can get legally in the game and it's you know it's it's a cool little house it's comfy and everything it doesn't have much in the way of display and storage and you may be level one rats may kill you but you may still have a couple of trophies you want to display hence a secret basement a secret storage um, and I'm gonna use this because because it's one room and it's easy to do I'll have to cover that up because a basement with a roof just doesn't make sense the point however today is to see how we can look around and move around objects so looking around object we've done that uh, last week you spray your 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 space and you move the mouse around and that's how you I'm not moving the object I'm tilting not tilting I'm panning my camera if I want to tilt it you hold the shift button and you move your mouse around I am not moving the object I am moving my camera around and C is going to put me back in my default position right to move the object I'm going to need to select the object hold the left mouse button and move my object around I can go left right backwards forwards however I cannot go up or down to do that I'm going to have to press onto the Z key on my keyboard select my object hold the left mouse and go up and down now I can go up and down and only up and down as long as I hold the Z key I'll only be able to move along the Z axis that works also for the X axis and the Y axis so that's really good if you want to move objects side by side for example you're gonna go like that it's gonna be a lot more precise than try to keep the alignment because this is a little bit wobbly that's the first way you can move around your objects the other way we're going from the very general to the precision tool if you double click on your object to bring up the properties you have ooh, oh my goodness I'm rotating it with the mouse let's not do that A nice zero there we go you can move your object along the axis X Y Z so this is up and down you can rotate it along various axes 
don't want to do that right now. And you can also decide the increments. Really good if you want to put, I don't know, uh, five plates next to one another. Don't forget to put one back. So this is the, the surgeon move. But we have something in between that is really quite useful. Let's imagine I am not quite as lazy taking a mesh that gives me a whole room already and I want to build my room. I am going to build a room. We're going to go to static. Common tile set and let's have a corner. Brilliant. On my corner, I want to make a whole room so I can bring a second one in. And then, you know, move it around and try to make the two nicely fit. You see, this is never going to work. Sure, I can be more precise by opening this, going like that. Or even I could go, okay, this is the height I want. Uh, Control C to copy the number. And paste. Brilliant. And I'm gonna have exactly the same height. Actually, we can tell because the two textures are overlapping. <sighs> can do that, it works. Oh, but we can do so much better. We're going to click right here for the grid snap and right there for the angle snap. And what it moves what it means, sorry, is that now, yes, I can move freely, but in increments of exactly preference 64. You can change that to whatever you want. Meaning now, I can really align things nicely. Likewise for the angle, it's going to move uh, at a 45 degree every time I move around. By the way, to rotate an object, I should have told you that. Left mouse button, you're moving it. Right mouse button, you're rotating it. And now it's going to be very easy to snap my uh, tiles together. And it's not going to overlap. It's not going to give me a gap in between brilliant but I'm lazy <laughs> so I'm taking that room right there I'm gonna have it snap anyway uh, it actually is quite a good idea to start building there on uh, level zero so you know that everything is at the same level and well, that's gonna be a lot easier to find right I want to put something to display and store Really, I'm just gonna have a table there. Table is furniture. It is common furniture I want, um, not fans. Table, brilliant. Right, remember we can move around freely and that's gonna take a bit of time to get the table exactly where I want. It's likely it's gonna float or clip. If I have the grid snap, eh, damn. It's not really snapping the way I want. Fear not, we have yet another tool in, uh, in our toolbox. You see the, the frame or the box around my table? This is the, the collision box, basically. If you select an object and you press F, it is going to go down until it collides with another object. Right now, it's my, my floor. And that's exactly what's happening. And now it's nicely on the same level, precisely, no clipping, no floating, brilliant. Now, sometimes it doesn't always work. You want to, you know, you use it, but then you do zoom in to make sure it's fine. There could be something that blocks or the, the box around your object is not exactly perfect, but that's a great tool. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the corner of my room. clipping there all right there we go so when you're moving around in your construction set you're really uh, going between holding the space bar to move around holding the shift key to rotate around not hold anything to move your objects around but very quickly you'll do it without even thinking I have a table and I want to put a chest on it uh, no under it I'm gonna put a chest under it. Chest is a container. Chest. 
All right, we have all kinds of chests. Clearly, I do not want a chest that has the name of an NPC on it. It's a unique one. There's only one of them, and it has their own personal possessions or, in the case of shopkeepers, items that they sell. Remember, we don't hit save. We just close it. We don't want to leave our fingerprints. Uh, chest small. Yeah, let's go. Let's have chest small. I want it on the floor. Okay, maybe it wasn't great to have a chest small, but I like the look of that one. I just wish it was bigger. No problem. Double click to open the properties. We know how to position, rotate. We also have 3D scales, which is where you can make an object anywhere between twice as big or twice as small. Unfortunately, you cannot go more than twice as big or twice as small. That's, uh, that's a shame. Uh, that is not good, it's floating F. All right, there's another way you can do that actually. If you hold the S key, how is it? My goodness, how do I do that? There we go. <laughs> That's so weird. You, I do those things without thinking and now to put words on it. You hold the S key and left mouse and you see you can shrink your object to the size you want. Me, I really want as big as possible. There you have it. Okay, I now have a chest. Brilliant. You noticed how I clicked cancel so that I haven't left my fingerprint there. But let's face it, a chest that can hold 25, a weight of 25, is... it's nothing. I want a chest where I can put a whole bunch of things. I like to go 999, like a whole bunch of things. Well, yeah, right. But if I hit save right now, sure, my chest is going to hold infinite storage or close to infinite storage. But now I have left my fingerprint and anyone, any modder that uses the, ch the small chest is going to have a chest that is infinitely big. It's not going to break the game, all right, but people who download your mod, download a mod that adds a basement to a house, not a mod that multiplies infinitely the capacity of some chests. I'm going to leave it right now. This is going to be good to show you how to clean the mods later on. But what you really should do, you have your chest. You want it to be different. You want it to have infinite capacity. You want to call it differently. It's going to be um, not so small chest. You don't want to modify the vanilla asset. You want it to give it a new ID, a new unique ID. Most models choose a couple of letters that they use as a prefix. I started with AA. It's not imaginative at all, but that's the way it is. Chest small. Obviously, you could name it whatever you want. It is actually a good idea to try and keep the, the naming system of uh, the construction set of Bethesda. That way it's coherent, it's easier to find. And you know, if I ever create a chest called extra small, I'm gonna have first all the chests called chest, 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 and then the different types of chests. Whether if I have small chest and then later on large chest, they're not gonna be together but it's a matter of personal preference chest small good save yes i do want to create a new object and now i have my own chest with the attributes and properties that i wanted and there we have it guys that's it for today we know how to look around objects pan around objects move objects more or less precisely and how to create our own objects thank you for watching i'll see you next week Bye bye